Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about transformations of linear and absolute functions. So first, as you recall from back in Algebra 1, function notation can be used to represent transformations we see in the functions or in the graphs of functions. And so for example, one function that we might have is f of x is equal to 2x plus 5. Remember the f of x, what you see on the left hand side here, that is just naming my function. So f, that is just the name of the function. And then the x that we see here is what we call our input. That's what we're inserting in this function. And then our output is what it's equal to. So it's 2x plus 5 is our output. So for example, if I was wanting to find f of 3, for example, my input that I am inputting into the function is 3, and so my output becomes 2 times, instead of x, I have 3, because my input changed, and then if I solve that, I'd get 11, and so my 11 would be my output. You kind of think I was a vending machine, so a vending machine, your input is the number and letter that you are uh, clicking on that vending machine and then your output is that candy bar or whatever snack it is that comes out. So the first transformation we're going to talk about today is translations and we see that we have horizontal translations and vertical translations for these linear and absolute value functions. A horizontal translation is that the graph of y equals f of x minus h, where h is not equal to zero, is a horizontal translation of the graph y equals f of x. And so we see subtracting h from the input before evaluating, fun evaluating the function shifts the graph left when h is less than zero and right when h is greater than zero. And so it's gonna look kind of opposite when we are actually seeing the function, but here when h is less than zero, we really have x minus some negative number h. So it's gonna look like f of x plus h, where if it's going right, it's just gonna be f of x minus h. And we'll see some examples of that later on. And then we have a vertical translation, and that says that the graph of y equals f of x plus k, where k is not equal to zero, is a vertical translation of the graph y equals f of x. And so we see here, adding k to the output shifts the graph down when k is less than zero, and up when k is greater than zero. And so looking at our graphs here, at this top, we see that the blue graph, when h is less than zero, it shifted the graph left, or translated left. And for this red function, when we had h is greater than zero, it shifted it right. In this graph below, when k is greater than zero, we see that the graph was translated up. And for the red, it was translated down. Okay, and so now let's go ahead and practice writing translations of functions. So for these, we're going to write a function g whose graph represents the indicated transformation of the graph of f, and then we're going to use Desmos to check our answer. So for this first one, I have that f of x is equal to 2x plus 1, and I want to do a translation 3 units down. So I'm going down, so that means that this is going to be a vertical translation. And that told me that I'm going to be basically adding my k to my output. So to do this, I'm going to have that g of x is equal to f of x plus, here since I'm going 3 units down, I'm going to be adding a negative 3. Well, my f of x is just equal to 2x plus 1, so I have 2x plus 1 plus negative 3. And so I get that g of x 
is equal to 2x minus 2. And now I can check my answer on Desmos. So I go to desmos.com. And I'm going to first type in my function f. So that's going to be 2x plus 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in my g. So that's 2x minus 2. And so I see looking at this graph, it does in fact go down 3. So from the red to the blue, I see I went down 3 units just like I wanted. Okay, let's try another one. So now I have f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. And this time I want to do a translation 2 units to the left. So now I'm doing a horizontal translation. And the horizontal translation said that I was going to subtract h from my input. So here that means that g of x is going to equal to f of x minus what I'm subtracting. Here since I'm going left, that means I'm subtracting a negative 2 since I am going left. So that means I'm really going to be changing my input to f of x plus 2. So that's going to happen every time we are going left. Your inside here is going to have that plus sign. If I was going right, it would be the subtraction sign. And so now I am changing my input to x plus 2 instead of x. So that means when I am writing my function, I'm going to have 2 times instead of x. My input is now x plus 2. Plus one. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and just simplify out. So I want to distribute my 2, and so I get that g of x is equal to 2x plus 4 plus 1. Or in other words, that g of x is equal to 2x plus 5. And now I can go ahead and check my answer on Desmos. So pulling that back up. I still have 2x plus 1, but now I have 2x plus 5 for my g. And I see, looking at that, that it is indeed translated two units left from my red to my green. It is to the left, too. Okay, let's look at one last one. So here I have that f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. And here I want to do a translation for units to the right. So since I'm going to the right, this time I'm changing my input. So it's going to be g of x is equal to f of x minus my h. Here my h is just 4. Since I'm going to the right, it's going to be positive. And so that means that my input is going to be changing my x to x minus 4. So that means that g of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 4 minus 3.